Hello friends, welcome back to the Spoken Word, Poetry with a Purpose. We are in Ephesians 1, 22 and 23 today. Apologize for the gaps in broadcasting. Uh, we got caught up in the AI music thing and <laughs> I went and read all the reviews. Somebody's, somebody's, uh, somebody's hacking these AI music programs and screwing them all up. So everybody's having the same problem. So we're getting away from that and I'm kind of glad. I love what it did, the AI music stuff, I loved it when it was good, and I did my last, uh, our, my last video, talked about our foundation, what is our foundation, and it's not AI music, it's not AI, it's the Word of God, and so I've been getting away from the spoken word, but here I am today, now I can't do any more music, so I've spent the day with the Word in my heart, and now here we go, a poem again. And this is all new revelation from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives me the words. I give. I put the verse down, and the promise to me 25 years ago was, you put a verse down, and he'll fill in the words. So I'm not, and again, this doesn't, this doesn't have the weight of Scripture, and nothing like that. The Holy Spirit's leading my mind and showing me what to write. And so this is always new. And so I was getting into this music and stuff like this, but this is much, much weightier and better because this is, this is new stuff from the Holy Spirit. Again, nothing new under the sun, but he leads us and shows us things by revelation. So when I write these poems, it's the Holy Spirit leading a guy in my mind. It's a, it's a collaborative effort between me and him. And so I get to put this down. I love this. This is my mom's idea of putting this poetry out as videos. And so thank you, Mom, for that. Appreciate that, by the way. And so this is called The Fullness Today. And this is good. I like it. It's not too long, but eight stanzas. It's really good. I like it. God has placed all things under Christ's feet and appointed him to be the head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who, ful who fills everything in every way. That's Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. And this is called the fullness. All things now placed under his feet till time itself is finally complete. Nothing left undone, creation satisfied, and all made possible because of the day that he died. So much accomplished on Calvary's hill, beyond all measure, all understanding fulfilled, and all of it for his church, yes, his body divine, savored in sweetness just like the best wine. Us tasting and seeing that God is so good, our minds now renewed, for it's indeed understood that it's all powered by love, Yes, that blood-stained love that holds us and keeps us by paw up above. The miracle being that he is love now indeed, and that we as the church are in the world his love's seed. Man, the fullness. And we got a lot to say about this. We're not going to go forever here, but this is good stuff today. This this verse itself, this, these two verses are powerful. There's so much being said here, way more than I could ever comment on. God has placed all things under Christ's feet. So everything is under Christ's feet. Christ is the King of kings and Lord of lords. So we're even going to comment on the verse. And I need to start doing that more. I haven't been doing that. I'm going to. And appointed him. Who appointed him? God the Father appointed him to be the head over everything. And why? It's for the church. That there's a great verse in Corinthians that says that all of creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. We are the body of Christ on the earth. And so Jesus was appointed by the Father to be the head over everything for the church. It's because of us, for us. You know, and I, I don't understand that mystery. That how is it how is it all tied in with us? I don't have a clue. But it just declares that in the Bible. I went and looked at different versions. For the it says I'll say for the church. So he's been appointed the head over everything for the church, which is his body. Okay. So we're the body of Christ on the earth. The the the, the, the church is the body of Christ is the church and the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. We are in some way fulfilling his fullness. Uh, in every way, <laughs> we are the fullness of Him. We're the body of Christ on the earth, and we are the fullness of Him who fills everything in every way. Christ is filling everything in every way, and we are the fullness of Him. Now, again, mystery here. We don't understand this. You, look, I look at myself, and I just did a video on my weaknesses outside of the Word of God, and I don't feel like the I don't feel like the fullness of Christ. Do you? Do you feel like the fullness of Christ? I sure don't feel like the fullness of Christ. But somehow, corporately, at the body of Christ, we are his fullness on the earth. And it's again, and the poem kind of gets into a little bit, 
But these there's mysteries and stuff. We're not going to understand all this stuff on earth. We just take it on faith. If it says it, it is it. We just don't understand how it all works together yet. So when you see these things that are amazing and dazzle your mind, just go, okay, God, I don't understand that, but I receive it by faith because your word says it's true. So receive these things by faith, even if you even on the if you never on the earth understand these things, receive them as if they're true because they are true. We just don't understand how it all works together because God isn't giving us all the details yet till heaven. Then we're going to know as we're fully known. So let's get into this. Um, all things now placed under its under His feet till time itself is finally complete. Time has an end date. There will be a moment when time no longer exists. When eternity comes, and it's for everybody, both the good, the bad, and the ugly, all going to experience eternity. So time itself will be complete, and even time itself is under Christ's feet. Isn't that cool? He's in control of everything. He's the King and Lord of all things, including time and space. It's all under His authority. When He died on the cross, gave him, God gave Him all the authority. You know, Not over the Father Himself, of course. I don't have to say that. That's 1 Corinthians 15. But, so... So even time itself will be complete through Christ. Amen. Nothing left undone, creation satisfied, and all made possible because of the day he died. The most important day. Well, you get, people get weird about this. Well, what was the most important day? Well, it was the day he died. No, it must have been the day he was born. What about the day he was conceived? I mean, <laughs> we could we could bounce around this. It all has to do with Christ, all right? Either the day he was conceived by Mary and the Holy Spirit, that was a pretty big day, or the day he was born, that's a pretty big day, and the day he was crucified, pretty big day. The day he was resurrected, pretty big day, yeah. All of them pretty big days. So, but it all centers around Jesus and the cross. It all centers around him. He is the center of all creation. He's the centerpiece, the hub of all creation. Nothing left undone, creation satisfied. Like I said, that verse, all of creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. Creation one day will be completely satisfied. There'll be no more death, no more destruction in creation itself, which is waiting for us because we're the fullness of him. So it's waiting for us. <laughs> Again, mystery, mystery, mystery. All of it made possible. Everything was made possible because Jesus Christ was crucified. The, the cross, that, that, you could never speak enough about the cross. It's that profound. So much accomplished on Calvary's Hill, beyond all measure, all understanding fulfilled. Everything, it's, when God says it's finished, you know, Jesus dies. The moment he dies, I believe the Father himself or the Holy Spirit, somebody from the top of on that curtain that was three feet thick. That's how thick the curtain was in the temple. They, they just sewed cloth and cloth and cloth and cloth and cloth. So they got this curtain that was three feet thick. And that's the approximate, three feet thick. And, and I believe God himself just, it says, it torn from top to bottom. I believe it did that so that we wouldn't be able to say a man tore from the bottom. No, God ripped it from the top of the bottom and said, it's finished. When, when he said it's finished, he meant everything is finished. It's all complete. Redemption is done and everything's finished. So much accomplished and character beyond all measure, all understanding fulfilled. Everything was fulfilled the moment he died. The plan was complete, finished. We're just waiting three days from now for the resurrection, but it's done. It's a done deal. Finished. Atonement made. Man saved. Devil defeated. Keys of death and hell taken. It's all done. It's all done. And all of it for his church. Yes, his body divine, savored in sweetness, just like the best wine. Again, I don't understand his all of it for the body. I don't understand that. But the fact is, it says... All of it for his body. Yes, his body divine. Savored in sweetness just like the best wine. You know, the, equating the body of Christ to wine is interesting because there are so many different wines, different flavors, different tastes, different consistencies, different colors. And, you know, from, from, very, from, from clear all the way to very, very dark burgundy color. And that is chocolate wine, so maybe some dark brown colored wine, you know. But, but the body of Christ is like that. We're all these different flavors of people, all these different expressions of the body of Christ. Isn't it cool? We're all like different different bottles of wine. If you, you want to put it in a physical kind of picture, I just that just hit me. I like that. We're all different vintages, different different um, uh, different crops, uh, different vineyards. I mean, and, and 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 all together we make up the wine of Christ. We make up the body of Christ. We're this fine fine wine that is all going to come together one day in perfection and in, in eternity. It's going to be beautiful. 
us tasting and seeing that God is so good, our minds now renewed, for it's indeed understood. Everything we do, all this, all this Bible study and the reading of the Word and and our prayers, all of it shows us the goodness of God. I mean, we see the good. How can you not see that? That's why this idea of a big explosion in space is like, why would I give up the goodness of God? Why would I give up the love of God, that God being love? Why would I give all that up for an explosion in space? To me, it makes no sense that anybody would believe that. I would much rather believe that the God I believe in is love. I would rather believe in, in, in a beautiful, um, soul-filled, emotional, wonderful creator who is love than a soulless meaningless explosion in space one day, self-creating explosion in space that has no emotion, no soul, no love, nothing. It's just an explosion that somehow created all of this stuff. I mean, God is good. And we taste and taste and see that the Lord is good. We taste and see. When you read your Bible, when you pray, when you're filled with the Spirit, He's just all over you. You can just feel His touch in your heart and He's comforting you and Man, we could see how good God is. And it renews our mind. It renews our mind. And for it's indeed understood. What's understood? The next stanza. It's all powered by love. Yes, that blood-stained love that holds us and keeps us by pop above. It's all powered by love. Galatians 5, 6. Corinthians uh, 13. 1 Corinthians 13. Galatians 5, 6. My very favorite, my very favorite verse in the Bible, and I measure my entire life, the way I live my life, I measure by Galatians 5, 6. The only thing that matters is faith expressing itself through love. If my faith in Christ and the way I'm living my eternal life here on earth, my my sanctified life, my, my justified life in Christ, the way I'm living it, how I'm interacting with people, if it's not love, if that faith that's pushing me forward into other people's lives, into doing these videos, into serving at the church, into serving my mom and my wife. If it's all not powered by love, then it's worthless, meaningless, and junk. That's the point. That's the point. It's all because of love. The only thing that matters is faith expressing itself through love. All that matters to God is your faith in Him, and the way you live is all done in love. That's all that matters, and it's all going to be measured. You read 1 Corinthians 13. Though I speak in the tongue of men and angels, but have not love, I'm a resounding gong, a clanging cymbal. Though I have a faith that can move mountains, you know, I mean, it goes on and on. And to the point of where love never fails. Aren't you glad our God is love? I mean, this is the best thing going. This is, He is the best thing going. There isn't anything better than God being love. That, that I build my whole world around the fact that He's love. Everything is built around for me. And the thing I want to preach the most, the thing I want to live the most is that my God is love and I'm here to love you. And I'm not your judge. I'm here to love you. Billy Graham said it. Jesus is the Savior. God's a judge. He said this on Larry King. He said, Jesus is the Savior. God's the judge. I'm here to love. That's exactly right. God's the Father God is the judge. Jesus is the Savior. I'm here for love. So that's all of this. If you... If you ever see me coming off and not in love, you know that I've had brain surgery, I've had electroshock therapy, or this is not me speaking. My goal is to put these out in love, to do everything in love, to measure, I measure my life by love. Am I loving correctly? Am I loving as I should love? And if I'm not, I'm repenting quick because I want to keep on loving. It's all powered by love. Yes, that bloodstained love. What did love cost? His blood, Jesus Christ's blood, the blood of Jesus. That's how much love cost him, his innocent blood shed for you and me to make atonement, to pay for our sins, that we might be made his very righteousness, the rightness of God, the love of God, the righteousness of God, we becoming those things, that thing, the rightness or righteousness of God. Because of the love Jesus had so much for his father, your will be done, not my will. Can we do this some other way in the garden? Can Lord, Father, can we do this some other way? I don't really want to be separated from you, even for a short time. But not your will, but my will. Not my will, but your will be done. That holds us, and this love holds us, and it keeps us, be, uh, and it's holding us and keeping us because of our Father God up above. The miracle being that he is loved now indeed, it's a miracle. Isn't it a miracle 
That's why I never get tired of meditating on the love of God or on Him being loved. It's a miracle. Aren't we blessed? God, God. Him being love. What a miracle that is. There isn't any greater miracle. You know, the God, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't want to beat up on the Muslims or there's a lot of people serving a lot of gods that aren't love. You know, the, the Muslim God, Allah, is not a God of love. And I'm not beaten up by Muslims, but they have to pray five times a day, have to take a hajj or a pilgrimage at least once with the hope that maybe they'll be saved. That's why they throw themselves under buses. That's why they blow themselves up because they because their religion isn't based on love. It's based on power and control and judgment. And the only way they guarantee a place, they're guaranteed a place in heaven is to die in a jihad, die in a holy war. That Allah can't, even if he wanted to, turn them away because they made the ultimate sacrifice. That's why so many of them are doing what they're doing. Because there's no love. There's no power of love there. You see, that's why you should pray for these guys all the time. Pray for the Muslims, the Hindus, the Buddhists, the atheists, the agnostics, those that aren't experiencing the love of God. Pray for the enemies of God. If everybody, if people could see the love of God, they'd be instantly converted. You can't see the love of God as it is and not be changed and not be converted to Christ. You can't. It's an impossibility. That's why I'm such a fan of The Chosen. The Chosen is making Jesus Christ so accessible to so many. It's showing that love. Yes, it's done in a parable story form, absolutely, but Dallas Jenkins is always telling people, go read your Bible. And I, I'm the same way. Go read your Bible. See the love of God for yourself in the Word of God. The miracle being that He is loved now indeed, and that we, now this is cool. I love this ending the Holy Spirit gave me. And that we as the church are in the world his love seed. Why are you here? We're here to spread the love of God. We're here to be the seed of God's love spread throughout the world. That's what we're here for. We're here to be the seed of God's love. We're the seed of his love. We're like seeds. And what I mean by that is we're, we're like a, the body of Christ like this bag of seed. I'm just using, a, I'm just making a metaphor here. It's metaphorical. Where this big bag of seed, and God just reaches in with his hand and grabs a bunch of seeds and spreads them throughout the world. Everywhere we go, we can carry the love of God with us. We're about to, me and my wife are about to get into a real heavily volunteer, voluntary um, oh, um, uh, ministry of just going to nursing homes, sitting with those people and loving them, talking to them, being a friend. They're so lonely, they're so abandoned by family, and they need people just to love them. And all I want to do, and I mean this with my whole heart, all I want to do is go to that place, go to those, we got like at least four of them in town that are 24 hours, there may be more in other places, there may be, there's a few more listed, So, but we, you know, we're going to be limited on how many we can go to, but if I could go to all of them, every one, one a day, because a lot of them are 24-7, 365, but... Um, in fact, today, after I've done this video, I want to go to a nursing home today and just sit and talk with the people. But just go, just go and love those people and just share who you just, you know, as a, and if Christ, as Christ comes up in the conversation, you just keep being Christ right in front of them by love. You keep being the seed of God's love right in front of those poor, lonely, old people that got nothing because they're pam a lot of families. Again, I'm not saying it's all people's people, I'm not condemning it. If you put your parents in a nursing home, you have no choice. I'm not condemning you. But a lot of those people do feel abandoned. A lot of those people are mentally confused. And what are they looking for? What The one thing they're all looking for, I guarantee it, is love. To be heard. Just to let you sit there and listen to their story. Just be a friend. You don't have to do much. You just sit there. I plan on sitting in a wheelchair when I'm there so I can roll around and be on the... I want to be on the same level. I want to be sitting... I don't want to be standing above them, talking down to them. I want to be sitting there in a wheelchair just talking to them or a chair or whatever. I just thought of the wheelchair because I can move around pretty easy. My wife's in a wheelchair having gone through a stroke. But just go there and love those people. That's what they... That's all they need. I mean, you know, balance, you're balanced here. Of course, they need help and care of all that. But what they need from a guy like me to show up and just be a friend and to listen and to love them. We are the God's seed of love on the world. Think about how powerful that is. That God shares his love with the lost through people like us. That you showing up and being a friend and just being kind. The, the fruit of the Spirit, good, kind, gentle. Goodness, kindness, gentleness. Those are my three favorites. You can be good, kind, and gentle to everybody. 
That's what this whole thing is about. It's God getting his love out to the world through his son and through us. That's why we are the body of Christ, the fullness of him. That's why we're the fullness of him. Why? Because he takes us, physical flawed people that become part of his body, and he shows the fullness of his son through each of us in a different way, each of us in our own individual way. 20 minutes, I can't believe. But this is good stuff, man. Man, I'm going to watch this video again myself. Man, it's all about love. And Christ is the fullness, the perfect the perfect expression. The cross is the ultimate love. The cross of Jesus Christ is the ultimate love letter from God. I love you this much. He spread out his hands and he died and bled for you. The Bible is not a law book. The Bible is a love letter. Yes, there's law in the love letter, but it's a love letter from God to you and to me and to all the guys back there too. <laughs> love you, love you. Can't get enough of you. We will talk to you later. Tomorrow we will be in Matthew, I believe. Anyway, we love you and we appreciate you. And we will see you later. Have a blessed day and keep on loving people. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. A new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, love one another. It's all about love. Nothing more, nothing less.